and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you an incredible leader, one that I've had the privilege of being able to see on a, a leadership panel. I've seen her present in person and is just absolutely incredible. So let's not waste any more time. Let's give it up for Jen Picotti. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can you hear your fan club clapping for you? It's pretty impressive. I hear them. I hear them. <laughs> They're right there. They're right there. That's outstanding. Well, Jen, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Before we get started, I wanted to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Well, all right. Thank you so much for having me here. This is a lot of fun. Uh, my name is Jen Picotti. I am the president at Swift Bunny. Um, we are a software company that focuses on providing a platform for employee feedback, resident feedback, um, and our goal is to help property management companies better understand their employees, their residents, um, so that they can better support them and give them the best possible experience. Oh my gosh, that's so great. And I've had an opportunity to to work with Swift Bunny before and review reports and everything, and they're absolutely outstanding, incredible Incredible service. Uh, Swift Bunny in of itself is an amazing company. So great, great opportunity to partner with them and improve your your team's just overall function and just embrace everything. So, but Jen, you know, I love to, I, I'm always intrigued with inspiring leaders and I consider you an incredibly inspiring leader. And I love to peek behind the curtain and ask what inspires an inspiring leader? And so I reached out to you, Jen, and asked, I was like, what inspires you? You came back with three great points, and I can't wait to unpack and dig into these with you. So let's just jump into the first one, which is very interesting. And so I can't wait to ask you this question. Connecting dots. What is it? Why does connecting dots, where does this come from and how does this inspire you? You know, first of all, I've never been asked these this type of question before. So when you asked, I was like, huh, what does inspire me, you know? And I thought about what I, what gets me up in the morning and what I, why I do what I do. And just over the course of my life, um, what am I drawn to? And what I realized is I've always been a problem solver. Um, I've always looked at situations and tried to figure out why is this happening or, or why is there a misunderstanding here? Or what, what are we missing? And, um, and I've, you know, I've been a peacemaker my whole life since I was a kid. Maybe it's because I'm a middle child. I don't know, with two brothers, you never know. Um, but that's kind of always been been my role. And I think the first time it was kind of an aha moment of, of maybe I see some things that other people don't always see. Um, I was 19 and I was um, working at my sister-in-law's dental office when I was in college. And she invited me to come on this uh, trip to Russia, to Siberia, Russia, uh, for a conference on children's health. And it was through our sister city program. I was living in Boise, Idaho, and our sister city was Chita, Russia, which is in Siberia. And I was invited to be the youth ambassador. So I'm like, I'm in, let's go. So part of uh, what we did, we um, it was right when the free market economy was opening up in Russia, and there was still some issues with supply and demand. They were still figuring things out, a new way of, of just doing business in, in their country. And so we got a lot of donated supplies, medical and dental supplies that we were going to take with us. We had six giant boxes of them. So I'm there with, you know, doctors, uh, dentists, some assist medical assistants, and we have these giant six moving boxes of supplies and we're going through customs and the first five went through, you know, they're checking the list of what's in them. They go through, they get to the last one and they, they're like, nope. And they start to carry it off with them. So the head doctor who's in charge of kind of our group was like, whoa, whoa, you know, with their people waiting for these, like there are clinics that are in need of these supplies and he's, you know, trying to reason with them and trying to, and then the dentist jumps in, she's trying to, you know, please, you know, they're waiting, we need this. Uh, all the, all the grownups, you know, I've still felt like a kid, all the grownups <laughs> are like, you know, trying to, uh, to save this box. And I'm kind of looking at things and some dots were connecting and what was in that last box were a lot of um, single dose packets of Tylenol and Advil. Mm -hmm. And so I went in my backpack and I pulled out one of those single packets of Advil and I got it, the 
soldiers because it was all soldiers you know their army was the customs i got the, his attention i'm holding up the the advil packet and i was like oh my head hurts oh i have a fever i open this packet i take the medicine and i feel better and my group staring at me the soldiers staring at me, and he goes like aspirin i said yes it's like aspirin and he's like oh okay and waves us through so the whole group's like what just happened and it occurred to me that part of his job at, in customs is not to let controlled substances come through and on the packing list i was imagining him seeing acetaminophen ibuprofen those sound like drugs i can't let mm -hmm. drugs in but when but i thought well maybe if he knows it's just over the counter and it's not a controlled substance maybe that'll make a difference and it did and um so for me, it was like connecting those dots of why is this happening? Is there another way to look at this? And I use it in my job, you know, when I would do look at resident surveys over the years and I would see ser uh, service request surveys that their scores start to go down. About three months later, we would start to see move outs increasing. And I was like, if I start seeing this pattern, we need to really focus on maintenance issues and what's going on. Are we short staffed, whatever, so that these move outs don't start happening, you know, down the road because of lack of service. So those are the kinds of things I get excited about of like, why is this happening? What dots can I connect, whether it's interpersonal communication or whether it's patterns I see in data? Um, those are the things where it's like, what problem can we solve to help people? <laughs> That is incredible. And I love your story about, you know, going to Russia and then solving an issue very simply, you know, and it sounds like there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of confusion with, you know, this box being taken away, you know, acetaminophen, ibuprofen. Those are, you know, technical terms, if you, for lack of better kind of understanding, yeah. but you saw that through, you saw through the chaos, you saw through the confusion and you just broke it down to its simpler parts and say, if we, kind of do this, we can solve this issue. And I love this talent that you have where you can see through the chaos, you can see through the confusion and say, hey, look, let's, if we identify this, let's, let's take these steps to eliminate that chaos and confusion and break it down to its simpler parts. That's, that's smart. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's fun. It it's is fun. fun. <laughs> that is so neat. I love your story, man. That's, that sounds like a whole nother episode just just to hear more about this uh, uh, this trip to Russia and the things that you did with that. But uh, that sounds incredible. So, Jen, the other thing that you talked about or you shared with me that inspires you is listening. So what does this mean for you and how does listening truly inspire you? Well, listening, it's a privilege, isn't it? When someone's willing to share what's on their mind to tell you here's what I'm worried about, or here's what I'm excited about. When they trust you with that with that information, that's an honor. It's a privilege, and I love it. Um, but it's also part of connecting the dots. You can't really cut through the chaos. You can't really gain an understanding of, of a situation until you listen. And whether on a personal note or whether on a professional note, that's really the companies that I've worked with for the past, I don't know, two, since 2006, it really is about listening, listening to residents, listening to employees. Um, my very first job in this industry, I was an executive assistant for a property management company in, Cal in Southern California. Um, and so my desk sat right outside the senior VP of property management. And none of the assistants got an extra chair, like a guest chair. You just had your chair and your desk. But for some reason, a chair appeared at my desk, I was the only one that had a chair, and uh, and I didn't put it there. But it was because it was always full. There was always someone in it because people would come and they would just kind of lay out what they're trying to what they were working on or what they were trying to figure out. And and I enjoyed listening. It was one way that I learned of just about our business and about people and about relationships and collaborations. Uh, I came to uh, work one morning and there was you know the Peanuts cartoon of Lucy at the uh, site, the psychiatrist, is in, <laughs> five cents. They had put that up on my, uh, uh, on my credenza. Uh, and I thought that was so funny, but, uh, but to me, again, it was a big compliment that people felt comfortable and safe to just be able to be like, here's what's going on and know that I was willing 
to just listen and just be with them. And, and I think that's kind of the secret sauce to a lot of things is just when you're willing to listen, you're willing to understand, you can move a lot more quickly in solving problems, I think. Yeah, 100%. One thing that you said truly resonated with me is you said listening is a privilege. And I, I truly, that that really kind of speaks to me because when somebody is willing to kind of open up and share with you, if your perspective on that as the recipient of what they're about to share with you at, is privilege, then you're going to get that chair placed in front of your desk because people say, hey, listen, Jen's the one you need to talk to because one, she's going to listen to you. <clears throat> and two, she's got the skill to connect the dots for the issues that you're kind of working through, but she's going to listen and really, you know, honor you through that listening privilege. I love that. It really is. And I, even at home, you know, I love listening to my daughters. I love the things that they're talking about, the stories that they bring home from school. I love listening to my husband, you know, and his work and things that he's dealing with. I learn so much just from just hearing what they had to say and what they've been <laughs> through. Like, what? <laughs> they did. <laughs> you know, I, it's, I love it. Oh, my gosh. What a, what a great perspective to really kind of transform the way you the way you think about listening some of a lot of us were like oh my god I gotta listen to this person talk <laughs> I mean but there you, are those moments too you know well but. sure <laughs> <laughs> but but if you if you just flip it to say hey this is a privilege to listen what am I you know you know what can come from this that's incredible you're just going to take you so much further when you when you just flip that perspective gosh that's learn something new today Jen thank you so much for that <laughs> So the third point that you brought up um, and you kind of mentioned your family, family adventures. I love that. Oh, yeah. um, so what does that mean to you? Why, why is a lot of people are like, oh, family, family <laughs> adventures. What does that mean for you? And how, how come that inspires you? Well, I, I never thought I would have kids uh, growing up. It was like, oh, kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no way. Uh, and I changed my perspective when I, uh, once I got married and got a little bit older. Um, but I love, I've always loved exploring the world, trying new things, seeing new things, meeting new people. And my husband and I did a lot of that kind of adventure when we first got married. Um, and when we had kids, it brings a whole different perspective of showing them things, introducing them to places and, uh, seeing their reaction and, um, and what I found now is they're getting older. My youngest one's in middle school. My older one is a sophomore in high school. And you start to realize there's not a whole lot of time left that they're going to necessarily be under my roof and under my control. <laughs> uh, you only have so much influence after a while. But um, I, I have found that when we have our time together, even if it's a long weekend, uh, if it's a staycation, whatever it is, having that that time together in, in one room and and talking about what we've seen or what we've done or planning our day and seeing the silliness that can happen and you know the inside jokes that start developing <laughs> you know being able to play poker with ketchup packets because we don't have poker chips you know and those kinds of things they happen in those moments where you're just all together in one place at the same time traveling in a herd um i i'm always excited and interested in what comes out of that and the conversations that come out and the observations that they have that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have picked up on. Um, those things to me, it, it's, again, it's learning, it's listening, it's, um, and most of the time I kind of forget to participate in the conversation because I'm just like observing all of the stuff that's, that's happening. But um, yeah, one of the things that I want to do before my girls uh, are both out of the house is, go and visit all the places that um, that we have heritage from. You know, between my husband and I, we represent seven countries. And so being able to take them, hopefully, this is my my goal, um, to be able to take them and, and expose them to different parts of their heritage and our heritage, um, I think would be so interesting and exciting. So uh, we're actually getting ready to do our first part of the heritage tour really soon for the holidays. We're going to Italy and England 
And so I cannot, it's the first time that they'll be in Europe. So I can't wait to see what comes out of that, what stands out to them, what's exciting to them and what inside jokes will happen, <laughs> you know, what, what'll go on. But it's, it's, I really treasure that, that, that family time more than I ever have and being able to experience things together because that's where memories are created, right? When you all experience something at the same time and you're like, remember the time when, <laughs> like, I, I love those kinds of things. Oh my gosh. I, I love that you're, you're placing an order. There's a couple of things that kind of resonate with me, Jen, is your, your order is really set well because family is incredibly important to you. And through that, you're creating this foundation for your family and you're the architect of just building these experiences with your kids and as simply as maybe sitting at the kitchen table or traveling to England and Italy. I mean, you're creating these experiences that will become core memories for them. And then you're creating this legacy because I imagine your kids, your daughters will end up taking these experiences and these things that you and your husband did, and they'll do it for their own family. And that'll continue to build. So you're creating this, whether you believe it or not, you're creating this incredible legacy with your family. And I, I just think that's so incredible uh, that you're doing that with your family. And and I, as a father myself, my wife and I try to do that with our kids. And so I, I totally respect what you're doing there. And that's, that's great uh, that you have that, that opportunity. Well, Jen, we're getting close to the end of our time. This has been so great connecting with you and learning a little bit more about what inspires you. Before we wrap up, I would love to give you an opportunity to share a closing thought with us. Oh, closing thought. You know, I think just from this conversation um, and just being reminded of some things, I, I think about what's going on in the world, in our industry, in our homes, um, and it's challenging out there. It's, life is messy. It's, it's things happen and, and we get the interactions that are, that can be really uncomfortable. And um, I think if we can all just take a little bit and listen a little bit more, have a little more patience with the person in front of us, um, really be curious about what it is they're trying to, to share, what problem they're trying to solve. Um, I think we might be doing ourselves all a favor. So I don't know, give it a listen, we'll see. <laughs> Love that. I love that. Give it a listen. Be curious. Have that perspective of listening is a privilege so you can connect the dots and you can just have incredible adventures along the way. Jen, this has been this has been great. I have so loved chatting with you and I'm so glad that you've joined me on the super fantastic exchange. Thank you guys so much for watching with us. And Jen, thank you again. We will see you on the next episode.